Hello, I want to welcome you to Think on These Things. Uh, this week, we are continuing to read through Scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, as we've been doing here in calendar year 2024. Uh, as we are working through Scripture, I want to take a few minutes just to talk through one of the Psalms here this morning. We started into the Psalm last week, and we'll be in it for a few more weeks here. And particularly, I want to look at Psalm 19. Uh, this is a really, I think, special psalm in some ways. All of them, I suppose, are in their own rights. But as I teach uh, Theology 201 here at Liberty University, it's a theology survey, and we talk in there about the way that God has revealed himself. And we'll talk about two major ways that God has revealed himself. We say God has revealed himself through general revelation, like through nature, for instance, and creation. And we'll also say that God has revealed himself in the second main category, which is special revelation. So general revelation and special revelation. And I find it particularly interesting that David in Psalm 19 talks about the significance of both general and special revelation. So let me read this Psalm to us, Psalm 19. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God, the sky above proclaims his handiwork, Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There are, There is no speech, there are no words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. I want to pause there. Uh, if you've noticed, general revelation, special revelation, those first six verses there, the psalmist, David, is talking about God's general revelation. He's reflecting on the significance of what God has created and the importance of that creation. Uh, notice also in verse 1, it said the heavens declare the glory of God. He uses a particular word for God there as El means the mighty one, has the idea of creator in that. And so even what he calls God, God has many names in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, but he uses a name that has the significance or, or brings with it a connotation of might or, or strength or even sovereignty, the one who is able to create. So verses 1 through 6 David is talking about God's general revelation or his natural revelation. But notice as we get to verse 7, it's a little bit of a transition. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Uh, he transitions from verse six to verse seven, now from God's general or natural revelation, God's special revelation. We see special revelation, I mean by that, uh, specific revelation to specific people at a specific time. And so scripture, is a point or a picture of God's special revelation. Ultimately, the ultimate revelation of God certainly is in the person of Jesus Christ. But David, as he's reflecting on the significance of God's law, God's statutes, God's commands, uh, likely in his day, right, the scriptures would have been that he had in mind the Torah or the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. He would have been reflecting on the law of God and how important that is. And notice the way in which he responds to the law of God or how he treats it. He says, verse 11, more of by them is your servant warned and keeping them there is great reward. Uh, verse 10, he says that this is more desirable than gold. So the significance, the importance of the scriptures within the life of David here is very, very important to recognize. General revelation and special revelation, David reflects on both of those in this psalm. But as a result of that then, notice as we read verses 12 and 13, what comes to David's mind as he looks at God who has revealed himself. Verse 12, who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. The first response that David has to looking at God's general revelation, God's special revelation, is to acknowledge his own sinfulness. He realizes, I 
cannot stand before a holy God, the mighty God. Verse 7, uh, it says, the law of the Lord. It's the word for Jehovah. So El, the creator, and Jehovah, the existing one, I cannot stand before him. I recognize my own sinfulness. As God reveals himself to you in Scripture, do you see your own sinfulness? Face to face with a holy God, do you recognize that we cannot stand up to his righteousness? That is David's response. Hopefully that is ours as well. But he goes beyond that, right? He prays that God would help him to be blameless. But then look at verse 14 and the worship with, with which he praises God as he closes this psalm. He, this psalm. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May that be our response to God revealing himself through the pages of Scripture, through his creation to us. May we see our own sinfulness, but through that may we recognize what God has done, and may we come to him with a heart that is bowed before him, with a posture of worship before him, and in that praise him for what he has done. I hope that this has been an encouragement to you. I know it is to me as I read through the Psalms. I thank you for joining us this week. I want to encourage you to join us as we read through Scripture and think on these things in our Old Testament and New Testament reading plan. You can find more about that plan itself and also the programs and uh, opportunities we offer through the School of Divinity here at Liberty University. If you visit our, web our website, liberty.edu forward slash divinity.